asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Let's welcome to the programme a great friend of mine, very proud of him, a real journalist, a great analyst who runs and operates the What Really Happened dot com website check out what really happened dot com and the radio show is terrific it is a must listen and you know i don't say that about any more than four or five programs that i stay in touch with uh, he's live right now from oahu i could have talked about his nasa work and his film work but we'd be here all day we've got him for about 25 minutes let's welcome back our great friend mike rivero mike welcome thank you for having me again Always a pleasure. Mike, your reaction to what's been happening in Palestine in the last few days, but, but I'm really keen to get your thoughts on the media coverage of it, which appears to be, at least in this country anyway, a little bit more, a little, a little bit different, a little bit more positive, at least as far as the Palestinians are concerned. What do you think? Well, here in the United States, the media is doing their utmost to try and make Israel look like the victim defending itself. Uh, from those eagle Palestinian rock throwers. They're trying to blame uh, Hamas for all of this. Uh, but judging by the response uh, that we're seeing all over Twitter, uh, they have really jumped the shark this time. People are very, very angry. They know what's really going on. Uh, they know that all the Palestinians were doing was protesting. Uh, and uh, this is not really a war. Uh, it's not a clash. I mean, the Israeli snipers are basically firing uh, from four to five positions, 100 meters uh, on their side of the border, shooting through the fence, and they're just uh, targeting men, women, and children. Apparently, uh, an 18-month-old baby uh, was killed with one of these expanding bullets. Uh, and uh, Netanyahu's trying to say, well, uh, we're in a state of war with Gaza, and we have a right to defend ourselves. Well, there are rules in war against the use of these expanding bullets. So it's just another case of Israel doing what Israel wants to do, and the U.S. government and U.S. corporate media uh, trying to cover uh, up for them. But if any other nation were uh, slaughtering their own people this way, the U.S. would have invaded by now. In fact, if you remember in the run-up to the Iraq war, one of the reasons given for going after Saddam was uh, he gassed the Kurds, which turned out to be a lie. Uh, the same reason they keep going after Bashar al-Assad is he's gassing his own people. Uh, and here we have Israel demonstrably on video uh, shooting the Palestinians, protesters with these expanding munitions. Uh, and uh, Trump just stands there and says every nation has a right to defend their borders. Uh, and uh, the hypocrisy is stunning. Uh, nobody's buying this. Uh, and in trying to defend the indefensible, the U.S. government and media are only making themselves look worse. One of the reasons I've enjoyed speaking with you for so many years is you say what you mean um, and you don't care what anybody thinks and, and you like a debate and you like an argument. I'm going to say this, Mike. Whoever took an 18-month-old baby to that fence is an idiot and I'll tell you why. The, I agree. The IDF are psychotic, Michael. They're psychotic, deranged maniacs and you describe those weapon, th those caliber bullets they're using. What sort of fool takes a baby to a situation like that? I agree with you. I absolutely agree. It was a dumb thing to do. Uh, but uh, the Palestinians have just uh, reached the breaking point. Uh, all they're protesting for is their United Nations guaranteed right of return to the homes that were taken from them 70 years ago. Uh, and Israel has never complied with that requirement of the United Nations. Uh, and Israel is trying to act like they're the aggrieved party. When in point of fact, uh, the reason for all the bloodshed is that Israel simply refuses to abide by the United Nations resolutions. Uh, it, it basically wants the Palestinians to leave completely and go someplace else. Uh, they want all of Israel for themselves and for the Jews only. They don't want to share it with anybody. Yeah, there's no arguing with that. That's absolutely true. I've had it, do you know, because of the nature of this program, I don't often hear from pro-Israeli um, listeners. Now, I'll read out tweets from anybody, and I know you will as well when you do your live show. We don't censor. And I'm happy for pro-Israeli people to have their stay. I've only had one today, and it's the... I mean, I disagree with it, but I'll get your thoughts on it. It's the age-old um, Israel... The, Is the Israelites were there long before the Quran was written. It's Israel's land. Israel has the right to be there. 
and it has a right to have Jerusalem as its capital unequivocally. It's theirs. I've had that one tweet from a pro-Israeli. How do you respond to that? Do you get much of that, Mike, on your program? Do you get much pro-Israeli stuff? Yeah, I, I, I do. Um, I actually had somebody um, literally uh, uh, offer me money to stop posting about Israel and Palestine, and I didn't even bother uh, dignifying that with a reply. Um, uh, but you need to understand a couple of important points. First of all, the majority of the uh, Jewish people living in Israel are not, in fact, the descendants of the Israelites. They're descendants of Central Asian Khazars, uh, and so there is no blood connection. Second, the Israelites were driven out of that land uh, uh, in times past, and that severs their ownership right there. The, the Babylonian conquest, for example, the Roman conquest, uh, that severs their right of ownership at that point. And uh, it is arguable that much of Israel's claimed history of 2,000 years ago uh, is a fabrication. Because if you go into any other nation in the Middle East, whether it's Egypt or Iraq or Iran, you cannot walk two steps without tripping over the archaeological remains of their ancient history. Uh, but in Israel, there's an absolute dearth of any evidence to support the existence of these fabled kingdoms of David and Solomon. Uh, and more than likely, there were little more than tribal chieftains, nomads living in tents. Uh, and uh, the only artifacts that have been proffered to prove the existence of the first temple uh, turned out to be uh, forgeries. So uh, it's arguable that uh, that history doesn't even really exist, uh, or it's been severely exaggerated to justify uh, Israel's uh, claim to that land. Mike, I've got to ask you this. I think when you were on with me last, which was in late March, we normally do this every month, but I had a holiday. When we, I think we, we, we touched on this Q and on phenomenon. I, I'm always stunned by the levels of cognitive dissonance. And, and I can say that with an open heart because when I worked in mainstream media, for, which I did for many years, I was guilty of willful cognitive dissonance myself, of refusing to accept the nose at the end of my face, so to speak. It's amazing. You know, Trump does what Trump does. There's carnage. It was inevitable, the carnage. You predicted it. I predicted it. We've yes. been covering this for years. And yet his supporters will say, it's unbelievable. H have they watched too much Hollywood, Mike? Because they believe that he's in there, some sort of covert operative is, that's going to blow it all up from the inside, going to blow up the deep state. Are you getting this again from some of your listeners? Because I'm getting it. Well, uh, when QAnon first started posting... Uh, I got a lot of emails from people saying, you got to quote this guy, you got to quote this guy. And immediately that sent up a red flag uh, because it, it felt like a sales campaign. Uh, and I went over and I read a bunch of his posts and some of them are worded very vaguely. Uh, and they actually remind me of Nostradamus quatrains where they're so vague, you can't really figure out what's going on. And then something happens down the road and people will look back and say, oh, that's what he really meant. Uh, so I, I don't pay a lot of attention to it, but it, it feels like it's a disinfo op or a distraction uh, to try and get everybody uh, sort of all worked up about QAnon uh, and not paying attention elsewhere where we need to be paying attention. Yeah. Is it kind of going away a little bit, Mike? It was phenomenal for a while, but, but maybe you don't see so much of it now. Maybe there's a bit of resignation kind of creeping into the Trump supporters' um, minds. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a fading phenomenon right now, and I think it's because uh, a lot of what QAnon has been predicting has not actually happened. And unfortunately, because of movies and TV in this country, we grow up expecting that if we're in trouble, some hero is going to come save us, whether it's the Lone Ranger or Batman or something like that. And there are way too many Americans who know that this country is headed in a bad direction, but they're waiting for somebody else to come fix it for them. Uh, and it's not going to happen. Uh, and uh, so Americans need to just realize if this country is going to be fixed, we have to fix it ourselves, which is why we have the growing independent media uh, who are out there trying to basically call the corporate media on all their lies and deceptions. Uh, we're seeing a lot more political action groups. They're being ignored by the corporate media, of course, uh, be, because the corporate media's mission right now is to reassure Americans everything's fine, everything's hunky dory, the economy's in great shape, uh, all these wars are honorable. Uh, moral and justified, and you don't need to worry that the country may be headed off the edge of a cliff. Mike, a broken clock is right twice a day. Has Trump gotten it right on North Korea? Now, as we speak, there's been a little bit of a row 
uh, developing as, as we've been speaking North Korea has cancelled talks with the South which were scheduled for tomorrow there's a bit of anger over military exercises that's according to the BBC just breaking news there but aside yes, from, you're probably, it's probably flashing up in front of your eyes as well aside from that has Trump done something tantamount to good diplomacy good politics with the North Koreans well, actually, most of the diplomacy and pressure on North Korea came from China, which is North Korea's major trading partner. And China basically came in to Kim Jong-un and said, you need to tone down the nuclear thing or there's going to be a war on the peninsula. That's going to be bad for everybody's business. Uh, and so it really was pressure from China that seems to have turned the tide. Trump wants to take credit for it, of course. Uh, but I think had China not stepped on in, uh, we would still see uh, Trump threatening war on North Korea at this point. What about the Robert Mueller stuff? You know, it's, it's, the new side, you and I remember a time, Michael, when there weren't 25 or 30 news organizations blasting out 24 hour news. We remember a time when things didn't move as quickly as they are moving now, you know. And I'm looking at what's going on now with the embassy, with Iran, and the nuclear agreement with Iran and all of that. And. I've not heard much in the last few days about the investigation into Trump and collusion with Russia. Now, that being said, the head of MI5, Andrew Parker, did issue a statement yesterday, again blaming Russia for interfering in elections and all of that. But it's gone quiet on the Trump-Mueller front, or has it? Well, it's gone quiet because the corporate media uh, doesn't want to report on the fact that the Mueller investigation is in serious trouble. We're looking at a major scandal in that the FBI has now been exposed as having had a spy inside the Trump campaign. Uh, Mueller has had uh, three federal judges uh, just shut him down and say, if you have evidence, show it. Otherwise, this all needs to go away. And they're threatening to dismiss all the charges against Manafort. Uh, and I guess everybody's just really fed up because it's been over a year, millions of dollars. There's no there there. Uh, people are looking at, M at Mueller having gone way off his original scope uh, of the investigation, which was Trump-Russia collusion. And now he's out there trying to make a big deal over Trump's relationship with this porn actress, Stormy Daniels, and a $130,000 payment. And they're trying to make it look like, you know, Trump obviously has something to hide because he paid the money. And maybe he did and maybe he didn't. But from my point of view, the question really is, was Stormy Daniels extorting Donald Trump? And why isn't anybody looking at that side of the issue? Uh, but that's the reason why the media is pulling away from it, because when that Mueller investigation basically collapses, that's going to be an embarrassment for the Department of Justice, for the FBI, and for the corporate media, which has just been pounding that drum of, of Trump-Russia collusion uh, all last year. Uh, and to find out there never was any, uh, it's going to be a huge embarrassment. So they're trying to distance themselves from that coming disaster. Interesting stuff. Michael Rivero is our guest live on the line from Oahu in Hawaii. Check out whatreallyhappened.com if you haven't done before. Important stuff. Mike, just briefly back to Israel just for a second. What was going on when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited President Vladimir Putin in Moscow? And while he was there, the Israelis were firing rockets into Syria and attacking Iranian positions. Is it just absolute definitive proof that Zionists are in control of Russia and the Russian president as well? Well, they certainly have a great deal of influence because Netanyahu managed to convince Putin not to send the S-300 missile to Syria. And I don't know uh, what leverage Netanyahu used. Uh, but it obviously wasn't very pleasant, as was demonstrated in that uh, parade, the military parade, where Netanyahu was trying to walk next to Putin, and uh, Putin brought this uh, military veteran from the sidelines uh, to stand next to him and, and basically drove uh, Netanyahu away. Uh, so I think relations between Russia and Israel aren't really all that good. Uh, so Israel has influence over Russia, uh, certainly nowhere to the absolute uh, control they have over the U.S. government. And the U.K. government as well. Michael, yes. it's, uh, it's just coming up for 13 minutes past. Yeah, we've got Michael for another 10 minutes or thereabouts. Mike's got to prepare his own programme, which starts at the conclusion 
of the Richie Allen show. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? You get to listen to Mike Rivero um, straight after this uh, programme. You might get the hyperbole from the Richie Allen show. You get the straight answers from uh, Michael Rivero. Mike, Facebook has um, been talking today about um, hateful <coughs> content and how it polices controversial content. It has alleged that it's taken action in the first three months of this year on about two and a half million pieces of content published on its platform involving hate speech. They said, Facebook, that um, this number was 56% higher um, on the 1.6 million pieces it acted on at the end of last year. What's going on here, Mike? Are, is the ground being laid for, you know, the sort of censorship I talked earlier on, you wouldn't have been listening, you would have been preparing your own programme, but about how I believe we've been corralled, 2.2 billion people, it's growing and growing, into being uh, on Facebook, it's the only game in town, it's privatised the internet, are we now seeing the beginnings of the locking down on this is what you can say, this is what you can't say, but more importantly, this is what you can and cannot think, is that what's going on here? Yes, uh, we're definitely seeing that, and it's not just on Facebook. It's also on Google and Twitter and YouTube. Uh, definitely we're seeing censorship uh, of these uh, giant uh, corporate social media platforms. Uh, the good news is that there are a bunch of new startup social media companies uh, which are uh, uh, censorship-free, and a lot of people are starting to leave uh, Facebook and Google and Twitter and go on over to them. Uh, but Facebook may be... Uh, First of all, they haven't really def said what they mean by hate speech. And a lot of people are saying, well, they're including in hate speech any criticism of Israel. Uh, because obviously uh, Israel has succe succeeded in selling the idea that criticism of Israel's government actions uh, somehow represents anti-Semitism, which is silly. That's like saying that criticizing the Nazis, you only do that because you hate the German people. Uh, but Facebook maybe ought to spend a little less time censoring speech and a little more time on their security because they've had another major security breach uh, where millions and millions of account data uh, has been stolen, including psychological profiles that Facebook has been building on their users. Uh, so a lot of people are, are very concerned over the lack of security on some of these platforms, and that's another reason why people are actually starting to leave. Good stuff, Mike. And just to back up what Mike is saying, because I sometimes get accused of not jumping in and challenging um, one or two of my more regular guests. I can't challenge Mike because we know as far back as 2014, Sheryl Sandberg admitted that they were creating psychological profiles for people. Not only that, but they were experimenting on people by putting stuff on their timelines to see how it affected their moods. This is why I didn't argue with Mike there, in case you're wondering why I didn't challenge him. It's because he's right. Michael, just before I ask you a question about Oprah Winfrey, you never know what you're going to get asked, Mike, when you come on this programme. Yeah. I guess no, they, I don't. Not, which is good. But, um, I mean, I've never caught you out ever. You, 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 you're like myself, you're across all media. Before we talk Oprah briefly... Um, my Israeli friend or my Israeli supporting friend, Free Spirit, on Twitter says, I would like to thank Michael Rivero for proving my point. The Israelites were driven out of their land. It's called Israel for a reason and they have taken it back, the Israelis. But of course, Michael, you didn't say that, did you? No, I didn't. And you need to go back and look at the historical maps because that land has always been called Palestine going back thousands of years. Fair enough. We'll just leave it there. I've talked about this for, you know, you, you know, I studied history at third level. I've talked about this for years, about why there's no connection to that land by any group of people calling themselves Jews. But we'll leave that there. Is Oprah Winfrey going to make a run of the presidency, Mike? She's now denying it. And I don't, I'm not even sure that she really um, started it in the first place. I think it was just uh, some of her fans said she should run, she should run. She's a woman, she's black. But uh, the last I heard uh, coming out of Oprah is that she's not really interested in stepping into that mess. The reason I ask that is because we talked during this conversation today about how certain news stories are like um, the tide. You know, they rise and they fall, they rise and they fall. But the Me Too feminist movement, which um, I, I don't like a lot, to be honest, and I've talked at length on my programs, I know you have as well, about the law being the law, 
harassment is terribly wrong. Sexual harassment is absolutely wrong. It should be dealt with. I think we have laws to deal with it. But what we've seen with this Me Too movement is, is something entirely different than people genuinely standing up for the rights of women not to be harassed. But anyway, we could be here all day talking about that. That won't go away, Mike. That's a particular story. And that's the sort of issue that could be picked up by progressives, by liberals, if you want to call them that, and could kind of light a fire under somebody like Oprah Winfrey. And I wonder if these denials might give way in 18 months' time to, oh, well, you know what? I've prayed on it. I've, had, I've spoken with my family. <laughs> I've spoken with my family, and I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. Final word to you. Well, it could happen. Uh, you know, as you say, there's 18 months to go. And it's a very disturbing trend to see all of these celebrities uh, whose life experience is basically being on TV and acting. And yes, Oprah's a successful businesswoman, uh, except for we, t- uh, except for uh, her, her TV channel, which is not doing well. Uh, but uh, they're not they're not really qualified uh, for political office. Uh, you know, everybody points to Ronald Reagan and says, well, he was an actor and he was a great president, but he was really. Uh, just sort of a ventriloquist dummy for George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, but we've got Oprah, who's, who's uh, we hear talk about running for the presidency. We've got George Clooney, who's making noises in that direction. Uh, and I think it says a lot about the current state of our country <clears throat> that we're openly considering, uh, you know, professional entertainers as our supposed supreme leader. Mike, it's always brilliant to catch up with you. Thanks for doing it today. Um, Check out Michael's programme, which begins at the conclusion of this programme, which is a happy coincidence, uh, at whatreallyhappened.com. And I look forward to doing it again, uh, all being good, Mike, next month in, uh, in June. Thanks for all you do and continued success to you and everybody associated with your programme. Well, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next month. Thanks, Mike. The brilliant Michael Rivero, live on the line there from Oahu in Hawaii. Check out whatreallyhappened.com if you haven't done before. Top man. 